Madawil si sil mora rogoil adal orena sa ala jor el al time mal masaul kuk nos edat magra mili jor el ang e ngaring ya tomo madawr a irin el kuk nos el meim lo umlo malbot pesadoi tal bui ram digil ang kanga ab iram digil umlo malbot lo bangkel ab ilu elilut el meim ang mat maru do kuk nabe bangkel emral la gel lolgo a trigal Terus ada ngerti yang mahu mesti tira imo belalai imo dalam gel. Itu kan ngah terus lupa gel. Enang ngaji Fred Kluki ma Pamela Holly. Itu kan ngah oh masih merbelau orang kalau merkul orang orang merugi merak. Merkong eh itu kan melatih melatih dengan ngerti rajau eh. Rai itu rakan nama memang sel meng Diak buka sel dor alter alat tu eh aktif muncul yang ngerti dan di Aktif orang itu sengal adi kerana memulakan tu koram di keling mal muda kata yang itu liu itu musuh amal kukti melas melalui dasi say so welcome to your second home Fred and first Fred and Pamela I know your I guess those Palawans who are like thirty years old or younger. Uh, have not heard of you or uh, they probably seen your books and writings but uh, do not know you yeah. but uh, those of us who are a little close to your age uh, know you and have seen you here yeah. so uh, welcome uh, to Palau and now uh, I understand you're, uh, you come to this part of the world uh, every four years, three years I'd say that's about right uh, Yeah, checking in yeah. seeing what's Changed and what hasn't. And uh, Fred, uh, you are a writer, and uh, I I read your uh, background, and you, you have written uh, eleven books, and you have uh, written many many articles oh, and yeah, magazines. Yeah. And uh, you are a professor at Canyon College in uh, Ohio. It, yes, it's the same college that I went to and mm. graduated from in 1964. Right? Yeah. And uh, I came back there in 87. So I had a life in between. I didn't yeah. just go from being a student one year to a teacher the next year. That would be gross. Uh, I, I, I had a life as a journalist working for Life magazine and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I met my wife. Uh, she was a, an intern uh, at the Wall Street Journal one summer. and. Uh, she always noticed that I had this far away look in my eyes when I was thinking about the islands, you know, and something that she couldn't compete with, you know. Uh, and so we finally came back together to this place. And I remember we landed in the Marshall Islands first, the old island hopper. Mm. And... Uh, that narrow, narrow strip of land by the airport, and I think she cried when she saw it. Oh my God, is this what it has come to? You know? But then she'd heard about Palau from me for years. You know, I had been working in the Trust Territory government on Saipan, and there was, of course, a disproportionate number of Palauans there way out of line. Uh, Caleb Budui uh, being one, and he recommended I um, interview for a magazine that I edited, The Micronesian Reporter. He recommended that I uh, interview this guy named Lazarus Sali, and that became the basis of a lifelong friendship. And uh, I'd be lying if I said a day passed when I did not to this day think of him in one connection or another and so uh, that became a partnership and you know on Saipan there were tons of Palauans uh, uh, Josepha Te Teur ran Josie's place the big bar there you know uh, Elias Okamura had another place and uh, they were all there and I fell in with them. I lived in an apartment that had Nick Ramon and Josie Pedro living in separate apartments. <laughs> so I was among all these Palauans and they said, you know, Saipan's okay, but uh, you really got to go to Palau. That's where it's at, you know, and I went to Palau <laughs> and uh, 
kind of fell for the place, I think, at the start. Even to this day, when we arrive on a plane, we don't check right in at the hotel. We drive to Icebox <laughs> for the view to make sure that's still there, you know. So it, 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 we have an attachment to uh -huh. this place. And we've uh, kept our eye on it for years, you know. Some changes for the good, some for the questionable. <laughs> okay. When you love a place, yeah. you have the right to worry about it. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Bob, you you uh, you have a career on your own. You know, I mean, you you're not attached to you know, uh, Fred. Uh, you you were a writer uh, for a magazine or a newspaper. Um, yeah, Can you yeah. Read the yeah. I um, I worked for the Wall Street Journal first. I was a, always sort of a pol uh, financial writer. Mm. Uh, never did much politics, but so I was with the Wall Street Journal in Boston, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and New York, and I was with the New York Times for 10 years and was a foreign correspondent in um, Southeast Asia for the New York Times. But you were in Manila one time. What, I, what I lived in Manila that? seven years altogether. Wow. Um, the second time I was running the Asia Foundation. Uh -huh. uh, which was responsible for the Philippines and about a dozen um, Pacific Island nations. That's the so, U.S. outfit that uh, gets grants from the government or it, something? It, um, it, is, it is actually a freestanding foundation and over the years has become increasingly uh, independent, of. but it does do some government contracts because government money comes in such large doses that mm -hmm. no single organization could handle the millions that are that are being distributed. So we're uh, the Asia Foundation was one of several uh, organizations capable of breaking the money down, creating programs, doing on-the-ground work. So, um, and then I also later worked for the Nature Conservancy that uh, that did the Coral Reef Center. Oh, okay, interesting. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, Fred. Uh, I remember a story that uh, I think either you or Caleb uh, told me that. Uh, at one time, they were going around promoting, I think, Caleb and these Palawan politicians promoting some kind of an investment. In Bill Isley yeah. was the guy's yeah. name. I think he was connected to Ramona Owen. Mm -hmm. And he had a, a, a plan for, a, I think, a floating hotel that would move from place to place mm -hmm. in, among the Rock Islands. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, and he and Polycarp... Mm -hmm. We went around the villages, and uh, they talk, obviously, make their pitch in Palawan, and then they said to me, say it's good. I said, <laughs> and I would say, I, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I understand they introduced you as some kind of a millionaire investor from U.S. <laughs> I think they were probably capable of that, yeah. <laughs> wow. So... Um, you have written a book about Micronesia, yeah. about Palau, and right. I think uh, the edge Irene, of paradise. Yeah, I mentioned that she has read your uh, yeah, uh, thank book. You. So, thank you very much. It's yeah. a great book. Yeah. So what did you think of the book? You know, I think it was uh, not only factual, it made people kind of want to sit down and debate. Yeah. And uh, I, I know that one part of the book you mentioned my father uh, being in love how many times or <laughs> something Jonas like that. And, um, he was truly uh, a romantic. Yes. He would fall in love. And then in those days, if you're from a certain clan, a certain family, you're not allowed to just marry anyone. So mm. when he's uh, not allowed to marry someone, he would try to commit suicide. And then it never worked, and that's how he got his famous name, Never Die. So, <laughs> thank you for mentioning that. In the book. <laughs> and I also enjoy that you have this deep friendship with uh, Lazarus Sali. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, a student intern of his um, right. right out of high school before I went to college. Well, you know, there were all these Palauans working in Trust Territory headquarters, you know, and Caleb and Lazarus uh, were among them and lots of others too you know disproportionate number of Palauans so I got to go see this place you know uh, this womb of talent and uh, I I came here and I liked what I found and and I still do although there have been some changes that anyone would have to worry about you uh, understand were uh, involved in the drafting of the 
the FSM Constitution. Yeah, the Constitutional Convention, and I'm, I'm famous for writing the prologue of it, which is the oceans do not, it was poetic language, the oceans do not divide us, they bring us together. Uh, you know, we are in a sea yeah. of stars, islands in a sea of stars. I was really pouring is, is it on that Is that the preamble? Day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... Uh, the former president of uh, FSM, Peter Christian, used to tell me, said, you Palawans wrote this uh, constitution FSM, well, most of the part you guys put in, and then you left us. So they stuck <laughs> with FSM constitution. Yeah, and yeah. Then he tried to amend it for so many years, I think three or four yeah, times. Yeah, I mean, that const- still cannot be amended. The constitutional convention was a last effort to retain the old trust territory in a new form. and. It was clear to me that the place was going in different directions, and that was an in vain effort. But it was an interesting time at the White Sands Hotel on on mm, Saipan. Saipan. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you uh, in the book uh, "The Edge of Paradise." Uh, uh, you mentioned Palau, of course, and then the other uh, islands. But I understand there's a new book coming up called Keepers. You, you just yes. Wrote, you know, it's not published yet. It, it is published, uh, and it's a, a collection, sort of greatest hits, you know. Uh, uh, All your, write, uh, your writings. Yeah. Yes, uh, magazine writings, yes. Do we have a copy yeah. of it? No. Uh, and so, yeah, that's it. That's got a, a lot about Palau in it. Mm-hmm. I, I can't stop writing about the place and yeah. wondering about it. You must be a romantic as well. <laughs> I'm glad you're a guest this month because beginning of this month, it's, you know, February and Valentine's, Valentine's in the air. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh. Are here. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you promised, Fred, that you're going to give a copy of your book, uh, Keepers, to uh, Salvador here, the... The owner of the station. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> okay, so, I'll get it to you. Yes. So in the uh, in the two books, the keepers and the Ace of Paradise, as, uh, you know, you wrote about uh, Palau or something. Can I ask you, like, of course, uh, the Ace of Paradise was written about ten years ago. Um, a little longer, and the University of Hawaii. The Edge of Paradise is, you know, it, it's a wonderful thing because it sort of capsulizes a certain period yes, yes. In, um, in, in Micronesia and Palau. And um, the University of Hawaii Press, I just got a note uh, just yesterday, uh, they're now printing, reprinting the Edge of Paradise, so it'll be available once again now for mass market, and it'll be an e-book as well. Oh, that's uh-huh. wonderful so, news. Yeah. yeah, so in the next, uh, probably uh, in the next 60 days, it will be fully available to anyone oh. who wants to, to to get it. So it, it, if we read that book, we can tell what was your impression yes. of Palau at that time, politically especially, okay. and also the rest of uh, Microsan Islands. Now, these keepers, if you are to read it, then whatever comments you have on Palau will be more, or you recent. Some more so. recent, yes, uh-huh. definitely, yeah. But I understand you wrote that uh, one fiction before about Palau. Oh, the yeah, yeah. The one yeah. that got me pissed off with you. Right? Yes, you, yes, you, you, you were going to yeah. beat me up. It was, it, it was, we were saved by a typhoon. <laughs> yeah, he was going to beat me up. Uh, it may happen eventually, uh, but it was called The Day That I Die. Yes, ah, a novel. Hello. My first book, actually. My first book. And uh, The setting is the Rock Islands, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I don't apologize for writing that <laughs> book, but it was a work of fiction, and people don't realize that a novel has fictitious characters in it, although based, in some cases, on local rogues. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you when you wrote that, that first book, oh, if I may maybe. ask? 25, 26, yeah. something like yeah. that. That's amazing. Yeah, and yeah. there have been... Uh, now 13 books. Well, mm. imagine being 26, a foreigner in Palau, and you're yeah. in the Rock Islands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot to, and there was a lot to learn here. The thing, I mean, all of the uh, Palauans I knew on Saipan, and there were a ton of them, said, you got to see Palau. You know, you, you ain't been there. You, you, haven't, you, have, to, you have to see it. And uh, they, they sent me down here, and uh, it was remarkable to me, the, the vitality of the place, 
a pride sometimes shading into arrogance, which is okay with me. Uh, and so I, I, I got a feeling for the place, you know, and uh, I can remember when Boyd McKenzie was the distad here, you know, you can't. Wow, yeah. uh, and Bob Owen yes. was up there fighting the rhinoceros beetle or something. <laughs> well, and they said after 20 years, we still have Bob Owen, we still have the rhinoceros beetle. <laughs> and then the hotel, you know, we passed that place, you said the hotel was, uh, you remember that, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, the place that they tore down. Yes. Yeah, I never figured out what was happening there. Uh, yeah, this this was quite a place and it caught my attention. And the the, the particular thing, I don't know, uh, pride and patriotism that I felt in Palauans here. Mm. And um, it's still here to an extent, but it has been complemented by uh, compromise and let's make a deal. Uh, <laughs> foreign investors and foreign labor, duh. Yeah, there's that truth dilutes, to that. that changes the character of a place. So that was uh, the Palau Hotel. Yeah. And then you said that or uh, right where the Neko Plaza is. Yeah. Was yeah. it called Palau Hotel or Royal Palau? Or, yeah, Royal, 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 Royal Palau, Palau, Palau yes. Yeah. yes. It was the first. And, and you said that's the the first and last time you saw Palauans serving beer. Or yes. Attending the restaurant. Yes, yes, that's been a because, lost art now. Yeah, because yeah. you don't see any Palauans doing right, that now. Right, right, yeah. It was kind owned of. by my Uncle Jacob right yes. next door. Oh, Her house yeah. is next door to ours. So oh. I believe it was the first hotel in Palau yeah, was, before yeah. Nico Hotel was built. Right, yes. right. And then, uh, so if you put, the, if you go back like almost 50 years and you see, that time, the uh, Royal Palau Hotel and you experience in your book, you know, the day that I die and then forward to Eso Paradise and then to your writings in the Keepers, the book. Uh, the yes. Book. Well, can you kind of just put in a nutshell your uh, recalling of those? What was Palau the first time? Middle, you know. I remember the now, the you know. pride that people had in Palau, and it was a distinctly Palauan pride. Mm -hmm. Now investment and labor comes from outside, and that is necessity, perhaps, but it's a compromise. It's, it's a dilution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way the game is, you know, and money comes from outside. It's let's make a deal, you know, mm -hmm. for the foreign laborers and for the investors. And that could be problematic. Uh, the whole world is concerned about the um, Chinese pressing into this area of the world, and I think you will not be immune to that. Well, right now they're the, the, dominating the investment scene here. Yeah, and on Saipan too. Industry. Anything goes Investors. on Saipan now. So, uh, in terms of the political evolution mm -hmm. of the islands, I mean, you were right at the center of action in the mid '70s about the writing of the FSM Constitution. Yes. Uh, and Palau had a delegation there, but yes. they were already gone. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. They. Um, these islands were, you know, I mean, together by, you know, foreign power mm -hmm. for the war here and won the war and then uh, used them. But it was like, the, as you know, the trust territory, the history, it was more of, uh, they have these islands, really had no, the American government really had no plan. You know, they just, uh, you know, uh, accident of history, we need a war here. So they're stuck here, so they just kind of... Uh, Improvised, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and run yeah. these islands like the you know, like yeah. like the Indians and the you know the Red yeah. Forest and the you know U.S. Is. But as we moved to the '60s and the '70s, the Palau and Micronesia got into that you know movement for self-government, for sovereignty, and, and for, for separation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So right now we separate. You know. Yeah, but we we all like have. Same relationship with the United States. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you think the, about that? Because we are now going to negotiate the second or oh, compact. Second, second compact, second oh. which is going to take effect like 2000 uh, yeah. to 24. You know. I don't know what kind of power or clout you have in Washington anymore. 
I mean, friends who speak mm-hmm. for you there, mm-hmm. senators and such. Yeah. There used to be some, I know, yes. but yes. Uh, I don't know if you have that now. Uh, you have an embassy in Washington, yes. yeah? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's all. I mean, I guess just an embassy, but uh, yeah. I don't have any, you know. But as you know, you know, with the current American president, I mean, n- nobody you know, has any control of that guy. You know? Yeah, I would hang tough <laughs> <laughs> for him yeah. until that's over. Yeah. So the... Um, so what do you think now? I mean, you, you're going to be here for how long? Oh, another, another week. Another week. Another yeah. week. Mm-hmm. And where do you plan to visit? The, you're going to go to the other islands or just going to... Stay? No, no. Uh, no, the, <laughs> the last time I was here, I went down to Peleliu and the governor was waiting for me. What's his name? Temismo. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like he's been really waiting for me, you know, when I walk in the office for what I thought would be the customary, you know, handshake and hello. And he uh, looks at a book of mine that's on the table. And he reads from it, my own writing. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing it. I can't quote directly, but it says, South is the island of Peleliu, well noted for its war ruins and its caves, but also for the high quality of marijuana that it ships north inside frozen fish bellies. And then he said, page six. <laughs> I yeah. said, was I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he ask uh, you to try one? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. My body is a temple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Peleliu is still doing that. I mean, they still have farms. I mean, they actually have farms, you know. Wow. They're and, growing uh, yeah, cannabis yeah. Oh, yeah. there. <laughs> and and, and uh, every once in a while, the police go and raid and uh, take the, the trees. But oh, I'm sure they get it all. not the people. Um, yeah, I'm and, sure they uh, clean yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they can burn it, but uh, <laughs> when you go, it's still there. And, uh, oh, yeah. I so, love this place. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> if uh, Palau ever will make uh, marijuana legal, then it's all set. You know, they have the, you know. Oh, so, I mean, that's what it. I call economic development. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's under consideration now. Yeah, you know. and you'll have foreign workers yeah. raising this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in terms, of you, what was your observation of like the the economic uh, situation? So when you left the islands, I mean, the place really has nothing, you know, in terms of yes, uh, real economy. Yeah. Right now, it has more activity. But again, it, at the top, it's foreign investment, and at the bottom, mm-hmm. it's foreign labor. Mm-hmm. Take it or leave it. That's very yeah. obvious. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and sometimes we were uh, talking, and what did we say? Sometimes it's hard to me to know if there are any Palauans around here, you know? It, where are they, and what are they up to? Uh, don't know. Oh, because what, you when you visit, like, last trip and here, you hardly see Palauans? Yeah. Street. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's That's funny. That's an interesting observation. Well, considering what you just said, Palau, of course, has become part of the global village with the internet and, and then young people and a lot of mixed marriages like myself, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so uh, Palau has evolved also a, a lot more internationally. Mm-hmm. I, I would like to think that we still have that patriotism and pride of being a Palawan. Mm-hmm. You know, that's interesting. I don't know whether you've been to the FSM, the, uh, the Marshalls, or... Not recently, you know, no. Of course, right. When you go and even, like our neighbors, are, yeah, I mean, these villages are deserted. I mean, literally. You go to a village that you knew uh-huh. before, and you know, there are so many houses just yeah. there, but nobody there. And same, same question, like even our neighbor in Yap, very conservative. I went to one village that uh, I think there were about like hundred some people in a, on an island, so separate from the main island. But I remember like four years ago, I went there, there were like a thousand people there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that's it's happening here, point. though. You yeah. go up to Melikyok and yeah, I mean, uh, here, uh, children and grandparents yeah. uh, and no action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's like a the the, the, the villages are all dwindling, and the action would appear to be in Koror. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, it's a 
even the road now has been built, so you can go around the island. Yeah. And the capital has been moved. But it's like mm -hmm. 10 years. And it's still uh, more people are... And one of the, the things that we're facing is people going overseas. I mean, oh. like, I know my relatives is husband and wife and a kid, or they just pick up and just go. Go where? U.S. California, probably. Yeah, well, California. They don't go the west. US. They don't go any yeah. east of the Grand yeah. Canyon. You know, they, yeah. they, they so, never cross the Mississippi River. Forget New York City. You know? yeah. But it's California that draws them, I think. Mm. I don't know if you also noticed when you were in Pala in the old days, we still have a very low fertility rate as well. So it's Valentine's month. We hope we'll have more, <laughs> yeah. more love going around because we need more kids in Palau. Very low fertility rate for Palau. I put out a notice in the newspaper, and, uh, <laughs> you know, have some fertile people coming here. <laughs> that, that would get you worldwide publicity yeah. and embarrassment, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, we do worry about our indigenous culture, you know, yeah. being lost. You know, and the language and because I if think you lose yeah. the language, ball game over. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's a binding mm -hmm. cultural thing. You know, the, the yeah. minister of uh, education here, uh, I think was uh, uh, interview here. You know, he told me that they, there's they've studies made on language, and that uh, it's been concluded that by year 2098. Most language in the world are going to disappear. Wow. And the, the two remaining interests will be English and Chinese. Wow. I mean, I, you know, I, I was. I think France and Germany would have a little to say about that, but yeah. in general, I think you're right. Wow. You know? yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, English is taking over the world, I think, and that's probably on the whole a good thing, but it comes at a cost uh, mm -hmm. to the cultures who whose lo own language is lost. So it's do, a particular yeah. thing about you that you don't mm -hmm. have anymore then. Very mm -hmm. true. So do you, as a writer, and, you know, PhD, doctor, do you also believe that if the language is gone, so is the culture? Yes. You'd have to at least worry about that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think the um, all the expressions, you know, yes. that you have in Palau and, and uh, that I can't understand. The only word I know in Palau is Amerikel. <laughs> and that means they're talking about me and I can't understand. <laughs> and I always, I always wished that on the sly, secretly, I could learn Palauan and not reveal that I did, so I could understand what the hell they were saying about me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know? I know one great way for him to learn Palauan is just to have your book translated. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes. Boy. So, yeah, that, that, Maybe the novel, to yeah, start that, with yeah. the novel. Yeah, yeah. His experience of being a 26-year-old in the Rock Islands of Palau. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Boy. maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll do that, because I, I, I'm good in, you know, Writing Palan. Yeah. yeah. You know, talking about language, it's, you see our newspapers. I, I brought these yeah. two newspapers for you, eh? this, uh, two local newspapers. At one time, we had three oh. newspapers. Mm -hmm. They're all in English. And, you know, talk, I've tried for in the last 43 years since I started this newspaper to go Palan also. I print in Palan, but nobody read them. Yeah. So I just, That's I mean, literally sad. just uh, one time I said, okay. So it's not a written language anymore. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So I've been it's thinking, sad. how do I, uh, I solve this? Because I have a friend who's an uh, ex-University uh, of uh, Guam uh, official who was here uh, a few weeks ago. And he kept on, you know, driving this point that we, you know, we should write Palawan. We should, you know, because, you know, he also believes that, you know, if the language is gone, so, you know, the culture. But uh, I don't know. I mean, this. I think uh, this Salvador is uh, the radio stations uh, and the TV stations are the only ones who are really mm -hmm. perpetuating or at least strengthening yeah. because it's all in Palawan. Yeah. But all written materials, like even our Congress, they have yeah. bills and resolutions in English in front of them. They speak in Palawan. Mm -hmm. But when you when you hear them. It's like thirty percent of the words they use are in English because the materials they have in uh, mm -hmm. yeah, are all in English. So 
I don't know. I mean, the, uh, I mean, you're a language guy. I mean, you. Write I think things. if you lose the language, you're losing something. But I understand why it's happening because the world does business in English, you know, mm. and lawyers do business in English. And what are you going to do? Well, what he's saying is so important. If you don't mind, can I translate mm. this to Palawan? Tiang a tokol mo lar ater bela rokui, especially tokubet sar magkakaril at. Kagita expert tal atara omelu usul papier almla malo ayz lo ase selbo do lagdo tanga litial tigingya tal tokor belau ang mormi the tial klay belau rigi the mag so mukam ngar roy the mukam ngar belau ang ngar magkakaril atal so mul amat lo ase kom atar belau ang malo lingi tal lo ase pumosu pat tokor belau kom mara museum kom mara ministry of education imbato ka material sa mga apalay beri mukam su pat tokor belau Thank you. I just uh, invited the young people, you know, yeah. from an expert who has just stated, you know, if we lose the language, we lose our culture. Yes. And I'm encouraging them, if you want to be proud Palawans, please speak Palawan, learn Palawan. But you've got to Don't let the language be, be lost. bilingual. Why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. My daughter is yeah. Fe yeah. speaks oh. four, yeah. and yeah. I speak three. I speak... German because my parents were there German. you go my wow. daughter's half German yeah and her father spoke only German to her and I spoke Palawan to her I yelled a lot to make sure she didn't forget it yes. oh yeah a loud voice always <laughs> carries the day <laughs> but it is possible God made everyone to be able to uh, yes. be a sponge when it comes to languages yeah. they just have to um, embrace the opportunity to yeah. learn so you um, you you obtained your PhD in uh, at University of Chicago. Yes, <coughs> and then uh, you became a. How do you go? You I see you are you resident writer and professor at at the same college from which I graduated oh. in sixty four. Yeah, mm -hmm. I came back in nineteen eighty seven, and since then I've been the writer in residence, meaning I teach writing classes and some literature classes and uh, and. Uh, that ended this year. I'm, I'm retiring. You know, I mean, 78. Come on. Uh, I know I look much younger, but uh, <laughs> uh, still. Um, so we're going to do other things and this sort of thing. Coming back here, you know, traveling. We have places that we love in the world. A place in Austria that we go to every year. Absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And uh, my German comes back. It explodes mm -hmm. there, you know. And so it's good to be there in that surrounded by that language with that language coming out in me uh, so we have favorite places we're not looking for new places the dance card is full <laughs> oh, you know, okay. Palau Singapore Malacca uh, Austria am I missing any uh, Sydney Blue Mountains Norfolk Island yeah yeah uh -huh. you know, we go back to these we go back to these places on a sort of cyclical thing so we are here every three years um, but it might be two <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> because we don't want to miss our friends and we're all getting older and uh, we can still travel not all of our friends can we have a very good friend in Manila uh, who is 95 oh. and so you don't want to go two or three years you want to see him as often as possible he's really a brilliant man and um, and a writer um, and has a bookstore and um, and I love because when we were having dinner with him the other night, uh, he was planning yet another reading group, and he's 95. He's not saying, well, I, you know, this is my last. It's not his last anything. He's going like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. He's just. Terrific. I like the way I get greeted by Palauans when I come back here. I can still see the look on Santos Olokong's face. <laughs> <laughs> you came back? <laughs> why, why did I not know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. He's, he's gone. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 so, uh, so Pam, I... Uh, I have a feeling that in your travels uh, around the world, you don't allow Fred to go mountain climbing or to go to like uh, waterfalls and stuff like that, right? Ah, uh, you do remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he has this, this this evidence for people who don't understand this reference. Um, uh, my husband was uh, 
was climbing uh, a waterfall in Pompeii, and um, and it it was a dangerous climb and not well marked. And he was with two other guys, but uh, he found himself uh, clutching at the side of a of a of a hill, <laughs> um, way up actually high uh, near a waterfall, and um, he didn't make it. Uh, well, he, let me say it. <laughs> we went around a rock, a big bay window of rock, a little bit at a time, and then we were nowhere. You know, we were on a little spot, and someone suggested, well, we could climb up the tree and out on the branches and maybe get further up. I said, no way. We're going to have to go back around that rock. And the guy said, go slowly, take a little nibble at a time. Did, what did I? I hugged the rock, you know, and I fell onto rocks. Uh, oh. ass over elbows and then maybe 20, 25 feet. Oh my God. And the next thing I remember is someone saying, well, are we ready to move him? I was him, yeah. you know, and they took me to the hospital and they, um, they got, tried to put him back together. Yeah. Yeah. They brought me soup that, <laughs> and then they put me on the plane yeah. to Straub hospital mm -hmm. in, in Honolulu. And, uh, that's where I recovered, but this arm still doesn't bend. It ended my oh, career as a professional yeah. boxer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I guess uh, over 200 pounds, six feet. Wow. I mean, if you fall that, uh, yeah. yeah, you're lucky you're still alive. He's very lucky yeah. he's still alive, and he, you know, and his, 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 you know, he had his head, he, his, you know, his bones out of his arm. He, he obviously, he can't remember all of that. I saw him, um, wow. and uh, and that we had missed the plane to Guam. And the, and the island, you know, they only come through the islands every other day or so. He has a very rare blood type, so oh. there was no way to give him blood. Um, but he's a tough guy. Um, he held on, and they, ba you know, they banned him, you know, as much as they could, you know, try to put him back together. Um, and he stayed in Pont Bay for almost two days before the plane came. Wow. Two prove, days. Yeah. yeah. To her that I was still sane, I said, "Ask me anything about American literature." <laughs> yeah, that was great, but he couldn't remember my name. Yeah. But well, so, <laughs> <laughs> but we got him to to Straub. They uh, medevaced him. They got him in there. They operated for yeah. about five or six hours. Oh, um, they put him back together as best they can. He heals beautifully because his head was completely. He was, wow. you know, it was a mess and. Um, um, and so he um, he survived it. We um, we were in Hawaii for a while, um, and uh, just to show what a what a tough guy he is, he fell from the the cliff in February, and in in December he ran the Honolulu Marathon. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Those are two things I'll never oh, do again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I also so. say you're uh, luck. You know the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. are blessed. We had luck because, uh, you know. By the way, we, I guess we share the same, same history of accident in Ponape. Me and uh, former uh, late Roman Pedro was a chief. Oh yeah, one I'm, of the islands. Yeah, we were in a car going around. We went to the Palikin. son of the door bings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We went, yeah. went around. Uh, uh, went to Palagir and went around the island. I think it was in Kiti or something, and it was hot in the afternoon. The air condition was on. And, and we were uh, sleeping, you know, in the car in, while the Ponapan boy was driving. The boy was uh, with us the previous night. He was drinking sakao. Oh. And then we came to the hotel. He said, hey, can I use the car? And I said, okay. They went to his village from uh, Kapinga, and they drink sakao all night. Oh, then my. came and picked us up, so he fell asleep. And we were going in the jungle. I mean, the Ponape road is good. But we hit the post on the bridge out of the blue i mean this is like uh highway or through and then we lit we almost fell into the the, the river kind of uh, which like just rocks if we had fell the car would have you know yeah so i lost this one i lost the teeth he his uh, legs so you know he got banged in his uh, legs so he so we came to the hospital in ponapen i just looked at it i said no way i cannot stay here so we we finally got because we were leaving that night. Yeah. So when we came to the airport, he he couldn't walk. He was on a wheelchair. I couldn't walk, but my you know thing was here because my teeth were gone. Yeah. Oh. So I was pushing him in a wheelchair going to the to the to the plane. <laughs> and luckily, nobody saw us. I mean, he was you know 
Uh, yeah. Because we, we had a meeting with the traditional leaders. But, boy, by the time we reached Palau, I mean, our family, everything was at the airport, and all the stories that we oh. about our I don't, I don't feel lucky in Ponape. I, I will not go back there. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I did not go back there yeah. after that. You know. yeah. So, in, in education, I mean, you're a, how many years were you professor? Not oh my God! Uh, I came back Th thirty years. Uh, yeah, uh, I came back in nineteen eighty-seven. So yeah, and, do and, the math. Yeah, and, and your college is what? Uh, it's uh, what was the emphasis? Of it's a liberal arts college, traditional liberal arts college. It has chemistry and sciences, but the emphasis is on the the, the full range of liberal arts. So uh, I, I teach writing there. I mean, not just fancy writing or poetry, but clear writing, expository prose that makes sense, you know. And it's an evening seminar uh, with about 12 to 15 students, and half the group in any given session brings in writing that has been submitted previously. We've all read it, and we go through it. And it's a very sort of um, touchy class because they're writing that they do. It's not like doing a history essay or something like that. It's their writing. Mm -hmm. It's an expression of their self, their pride, their ego, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to go very carefully, you yeah, know. That's a good like and but I, yeah, I have uh, a couple of writers whose uh, lifetime sales no, whose weekly sales exceed my lifetime sales. There's a guy named John Green who wrote a book called The Fault in Our Stars, which was made into a movie. And another guy named Ransom Riggs who um, had a movie called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar, Peculiar Children. Children. So they've gone far. They've made movies. And... Uh, they're very nice. Uh, whenever I need a blurb for a book, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that, they'll comment on it. They stay in touch, you know. But uh, so I have produced some professional writers, but that's uh, a bonus. Basically, it's about learning to write clear English to make mm -hmm. a case in in, in 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 language, and a lot of people can't do that, you know. And so, the student population is how many? Oh, the students about seven. It's a small college, seventeen hundred. Mm -hmm. Down half, an hour down the road is Ohio State, which mm -hmm. I don't know, fifty-five thousand and a killer yeah. football team. Mm -hmm. Our football team goes for years without winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, in the, there's been some uh, suggestion that we, our two-year uh, college here, which is a uh, uh, technical college uh, should be expanded to four years. And then uh, the idea, like for a small place like this, uh, uh, and then because I guess the leaders uh, thought it was uh, was an uh, uh, occupational college before mm -hmm. for the whole Micronesia. Now it's only for Pala, but we have students from FSM and other marshals here also. The four years as, as educator. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. I wonder about that because. Um, the students here, not to They're talk like down, four, 400. they need preparation for college itself, which is what mm -hmm. you get in a two-year college. And then I think they're prepared for a four-year program somewhere else. Bringing that program here puzzles me a little bit. I would wonder about it. Well, I have uh, dreamed of maybe one day they'll rise up and turn the capital into a university. Uh, and maybe, uh, oh, you know, to be like regional, eh? uh, and maybe kind of make the government offices a little smaller and the university a lot, you know, bigger yeah. and invite students from international countries to right, come in. Right. And Polycarp so, had a similar idea like that. It was that he would build it on his land, but uh, he would have a college there. But, you know, you have to bring in a lot for a college. That is uh, uh, tenured professors in a uh, wide variety. Mm -hmm. It's about housing. It's it's about dormitories, uh, and I don't know what the payoff would be, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Particularly if they all leave. Yeah, and we're so far, mm. that's the thing. Yeah. We're so far in the mm. middle of the ocean. Yeah, I like the idea of a terrific two-year college here to get them mm. ready, basically, for a four-year college someplace mm. else.
Mm-hmm. But like uh, Palau being, you know, uh, it's our location. And <clears throat> I mean, the, this president and, uh, and Palau government has kind of made Palau, you know, uh, known in the world in terms of ocean, you know. Marine uh, conservation. Conservation mm-hmm. and, and marine. And, um, you know, I don't know whether it's feasible to have uh, like a, a specialized uh, university or you know college institution where you bring in people all over for for this uh, because I mean probably the biggest uh, challenge facing the world is the the pollution mm-hmm. of the oceans. Yes, mm-hmm. and I took a peek okay. since we were down at Icebox into fisheries. Mm-hmm. Does anything happen there anymore? I think well, they moved to the Icebox. Go beyond icebox. Fisheries. There's a place called yeah. fisheries. Yeah, yeah. No, they, 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 they have kind of fishing derbies. I think is what happened. No, no. I mean, they the, use that for. Or? No, the facility there. You talk about the yeah, facility. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're growing uh, clams and fish oh. and. Oh, oh you yeah, mean yeah. the Murray culture? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, and then at the end of it, they have built the uh, marine law enforcement offices yeah. Yeah. where so, the ships I mean, are, are. You dark. know that that's something that we can uh, yeah. do here, like. You know, even the technology of uh, growing uh, uh, clams, that was here. Yeah. Palau discovered that. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as you know, like food uh, security is a yeah. big problem around the world. So, I mean. Um, I, think, I think Palau has, has slowly gained a reputation for its environmental yes. approach to sea management. Um, and there are groups and funders very much interested in keeping, you know, keeping Palau sort of front and center. I mean, I think that is where it's a beautiful place to start mm-hmm. with. Keeping it beautiful is a task. Uh, mm. But on top of that, letting the world know that the kind of management, smart management that happens here can be done elsewhere. Um, but this is a great training place, and people do come here now for yeah. training. Um, yeah. And, you know, when I go yes, and visit, I which, I, which I try to do and hang out. should stop at Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I'm, out, I yeah. come every time, and, um, um, and I've been very pleased. I know you had a, ty- you know, a typhoon sort of came blowing through, yes. and there was some damage, but mm-hmm. it's been repaired, and it's really wonderful. Um, and like I said, I used to work for the Nature Conservancy, so uh, I mm-hmm. visit their office and sort of check up on what they're doing. Um, and uh, and, I, and you can source money for what you do here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's just, I think that's the number one thing on your list for, for specialty education and promotion. Uh, and everybody's talking about, you know, sea rising and, you know, the, all of that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think Palau could be front and center for the world in that kind of, in that, in that category because people are really interested in what's going to happen to low-lying islands, the food production, warming waters, yes, you know, food right. moving away from their, re- you know, regular true. hunt, um, fishing sites. Um, there are just a lot of issues that Palau can be front and center for, and I think you need to pick one and then do one thing really, really well. You know, the, mm-hmm. I was told by the head of the, <coughs> this coral reef center about this uh, coral, it's near the former uh, Nico Hotel or Continental Hotel, and that area there that survived uh, the heat of I think it was the El 78 Nino and, and mm. 78 yeah. and uh, you know recently the the change of uh, uh, of heat eh? yeah. get the water get hit and it survived and they uh, they I think they took it overseas or to test it in other countries and then also in other parts of Palau where just you know it said I mean like it's just white you know yeah, bleach. The, uh, bleach. But, yeah, bleach. Yeah, bleach. Yeah, but yeah. but they, you know, the, uh, it survives. So I mean, that's an interesting. And interesting. I think so, it's only one in the world that they found. You know. Well, Australia is Australia is very interesting because they're losing the Great Barrier yes, Reef, yes. Wow. Um, and so the the focus in Australia is on what are we going to do before you know we're burning mm, and we're losing our, our 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 seas and this is this you know that's a national issue for them. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to ask President Mangza when he retired and he start the foundation to bring you as a consultant. Yeah, for this with thing. nature yeah, conservancy. Yeah, because yeah, and then uh, because this is uh, yeah. this is serious. I mean, yeah. uh, this is very serious. Yeah. It's food supply. It's 
it's weather, it's, it, it's, this is really serious. I think we projected that this would be a problem, you know, 50 years from now, and now it's like one of those it, bad movies you see all, at, at two in the morning where, you know. It happened fast. Where all of a sudden they wake up. It was a long time coming, but it happened fast when it came. Yes, it yeah. And I, I, th I look at my students who are 22, at the oldest if they're seniors, and uh, I wonder what their world will look like when they're your age, or your age, you know, and what will, what will they have? And uh, I'm not optimistic mm. about the future of this planet. I think we're destroying, we're eating it, we're destroying it in many well, different you know, ways. We, we actually come here to breathe. I mean, air oh. is a big. You, if you if you've are, been in Manila, yeah, yeah <laughs> you cannot you know you cannot breathe. So I mean, the fact that you have wonderful air, yeah, we're still. It's a small that, thing, but yes. it's a really big thing yeah. if you're trying to breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I have a question for the couple. What would you advise our young people to do in this time and age, in this era, since you know Palau so well, and coming from the conservation perspective, how could we motivate our young people to be involved in this endeavor? Go and come back sponsor their education or their training elsewhere with the stipulation that they return for a certain period of time to work here. Okay. In terms of, yes. uh, we discussed this uh, yesterday, in terms of uh, like young people, I mean, you, you watch them for freshmen to yeah. senior. And like in terms of like value system of the society and how young people like in your country, in US, their uh, mind, eh, like, uh, if you say like you want these kids to grow to you know for the future you're you're gone I'm gone mm -hmm. the yeah. sun has set on us yeah. so how do we you know how, you know the world is changing so fast you know? yes with this cell phone I mean I don't know I mean sometimes I, I look at my children I said how these grandchildren what are they gonna be when they reach my age or mm -hmm. at least when they become adult I mean it's, well, in terms of teaching, you can't really anticipate technology that's not here yet, but there are basic things. Do you know how to make an argument, to make a case, to persuade people? You know, I mean, using language persuasively, not abusing it, and writing concisely. You know, all those basic, there's no technology there. It's just looking over your stuff and shaping it up and cutting it, you know, and then looking at it again. Uh, writing involves rewriting and revision, you know, and putting them through that process to make it get better is important. Mm -hmm. Trying to always think of the writer as looking for an excuse to stop reading, mm -hmm. to drop it. And you've got to bear in mind what they, how they are reacting to. Is that explanation too long? Was is that joke not very funny after all? You know, all the sorts of things you have to sort of teach writing and rewriting, and that's basic to any activity, to any proposal. Mm -hmm. Get that down, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. doesn't require machinery. Yeah. Um, and I would suggest that you find something you love. Um, it can be your family and your community, it can be your language, it can be your environment, it can be find something mm -hmm. that you love. I mean, um, you can't spread yourself too thin. Um, you can spread yourself too thin and, and not focus on the things that are most mm -hmm. important to you. And I think people overlook those really simple things like family, commitment, mm -hmm. love. Um, they are incredibly important. Find something you love. and. Commit yourself to it. And we gotta remember Palau at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're in Palau. Yeah. It's a place we love. Yeah. 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 Okay, Fred. Here is the situation. Eh? I think you know you're coming here so many times. You know that we are Palauans are copies of America uh, Americans now. I mean, you have made Girax, you know, Americans here. So, I mean, let's face it. Should I be happy about that? <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, but I think uh, in terms of our culture, we still have and we hold it into our hearts. But the way things uh, moving is uh, pretty soon, this place will be like little, you know, uh, American uh, town. But the, I think the most, uh, I guess, 
clear is the system here, the political the, uh, and then the legal system here. It's American. I mean, in, in the past few days, a few weeks, Palauans have been clued, especially our uh, officers, to TV, watching what's going on in your country. I mean, the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the, in the Congress and the court. And I mean, with your president, we, I mean, most of us, I will say, uh, admire the uh, American system. I mean, we all, you know, the freedom and the, the political system. But what we have seen in the past few, you know, we just kind of accast. I mean, what? Where do this country going? So, mm. and some said, oh, this is great because. It shows freedom and openness. Fight. I mean, the president and the Congress like this at the House. So, is this? I mean, where are you guys going? Where is your country going as a as a writer and thinker? I mean, so uh, some of us said hey, we should have this system in Palau. We, you know, we can have this kind of open fight. And but we're such a small society. So when our leaders, can, you know, collide, we're going to have a mini media. Trump in Palau. <laughs> Yeah, what, I'd what? pay a quarter to see that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think the country's in bad shape now under that leadership, and the uh, fact that the Republicans have no march lockstep behind him. You know, there's no thoughtful. There used to be liberal Republicans, moderate Republicans, conservative Republicans. Now. They all mm. march in lockstep. Just the name? Yeah, yeah. So I think he's really destroyed the integrity of the Republican Party, and the Democrats can do only so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the country's... No, I'm not happy about it, and I don't think you are. Mm -hmm. Well, he was acquitted this morning. That's the latest oh, uh, yeah. I read yeah, on the I news. Oh, that. And it was, uh, the votes for the Republicans was just difference of four, 52 mm. to 48. Mm. He's so still impeached, though. Yeah. Impeachment mm -hmm. remains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the economy of the country is going, you know. It's going why? Well. I mean, yeah. it's. Uh, That's you know. in part because the rest of the world yeah. is, has made larger problems. Is it just to the mic? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we look good in comparison to some other places that are in, in more economic disarray than political disarray, unless you're in England, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're getting a reorganization of the world economically, and that's something to watch closely. Who is going to have the money? Who is going to make the investments? And and as far as I'm concerned, great concern over the change of power structure in the Pacific. So you mm -hmm. see a lot of um, of investment by, say, France in the Pacific or countries that you that say, why are you pumping more millions in? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the balance of power in the Pacific. This is going to be a really important part mm -hmm. of the next. A decade or so. Who has control of the Pacific? Yes, yes, yes. Starting this year, 2020, and we have our election com coming up too. Mm. So, we yeah, need I think to pray uh, a lot. <laughs> we have no worry that the uh, U.S. is going to be here. Yeah, and I mean they're coming big. I mean, like uh, Palau mm. also, you know, we're getting attention from even Trump, you know, and his uh, people. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of, I guess, for our. Uh, Funding or economic security or money security, we have no problem. I think we, you know, as you see in the newspaper, uh, they have military have to, and harbor yeah, rights yeah. here, don't they? Yes, they could put in an airstrip. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, yeah. and then we have 298 million in U.S. Uh, investment <laughs> now from our country, so we're we're okay, you know. I think you're better than okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, we are kind of concerned about the, where where are we going in the future? The Chinese are at our doorstep, so I mean that that'll be <laughs> a trying issue, and. Yes. Uh, you're the midgets, and they're the tidal wave. You're the giants, yes. you know? and so I, I, I hope you, I hope you can handle that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, uh, thank you very, very much for. Uh, Thanks for having uh, us. I we always like to talk about Palau, and. Uh, but my last question will be. You think you can? I think some of your uh, writings have been made into movies or books. You think we can uh, make uh, this uh, "The Day I Die" um, a book, a movie, or an uh, "Edge of Paradise" something? You know, there was interest, early interest, uh, that fell apart. 
for, uh, in the day that I die. But I've been lucky with Dog Day Afternoon, which was based on a magazine article about a bank robbery that I wrote for Life Magazine, had Al Pacino in it. I saw that movie. Yeah, and yeah. Eddie and the Cruisers, which was based yeah, on Eddie rock and, and the roll. Cruisers. And yeah. so I'll take two. And I mean, if it happens, it happens, yeah. you know. Uh, you can't make it happen. But you get a guy. Yes. You get a phone call from a guy. His name is always Marty, <laughs> and it's oh, he. He wants to do something with your book, you know. And yeah. generally, he wants to have an option on the book, which might get me a thousand dollars, so he can shop it around and claim to have a, a mm -hmm. connection. But then, the big money comes on the first day of filming. You know, mm -hmm. uh, first day the buffs of, office. Yeah. Uh, no, for filming. Yeah, oh. yeah oh, that's the big yeah. Contracts yeah. are written in steps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then there's uh, what they call the schmuck money, the fool money. Mm -hmm. You know, the profits. And the, the Hollywood has a way of bookkeeping that. Uh, mm -mm -mm. But it still would make a great. It still would make a really fun book. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, I'm I'm the optimist. I'm like, hey, well, why not? Yeah. yeah, and you're the I writer, like so maybe you can do something about this, and you know, <laughs> and then be kind of related to environment and all that. This uh, 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 novel, and there I mean, are lots of issues out here. Yeah, and yeah. really important issues. So you can partner with yes. us uh, yeah. with uh, Southern, so we can make some money yeah. uh, from this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, yeah. when, when we came back here this time, I said, "Well, we still recognize the place. You know, it's yeah. still yeah. it's still Karor. You know, uh, the, the bridge is holding." Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we it, it feels like a homecoming, but uh, if you love a place, you're entitled to worry about it, and I have worries the same yes. as you do. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, it's nice to see you again and to chat publicly. He almost beat me up once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a tight move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Otherwise, saya kemal masaul di lagar elang untuk ngerti al program lagi de ma elal melong emlurer. It is such a pleasure to meet you both. Yes. Yes, I'm. I know the young people after the. Do you have a card or something or any ID? I write your contact. I will write my contact. Yeah, it's a pleasure because I'd like the young people to also Google you and and really read your books to learn our history and what and how Palau has evolved. And you have an email address, don't you? Absolutely. And your website is pfkluga.com. Okay. Yes, PF. all over Finnish. PF, no periods. PF Kluga, K L U G E dot com. That's for the website. For the website. And okay. emails Kluga F at Kenyan dot edu. So. Okay. Thanks for putting up with us. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right.